So few footballers in Ghana have been able to get global recognition like the man I have here today. They know a lot of his stories, his playing career and how he became famous. But today we try to find out how it all started for him and how he's been able to go through the challenges he's had in life. Lamte is my man. Hi, Ni. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Today, we start off from you. Now, I want to find out, everybody has his own story. Some people run away from school to play football. Some people combine schooling with football. For you, how was it like to grow up? Uh, difficult. I mean, similar to both, uh, both things that you said. I mean, did not go to school. Go to school maybe during football time and all that. I was sick in school. I mean, uh, colleagues have to get that money to pay my school fees during football and all that. So it wasn't easy. I mean, growing up, you know, uh, at that time. But well, uh, got so good, uh, I was able to ma uh, make it. You know, I was not somebody who completed maybe those time is a uh, uh, form four. So you know, I did not write my common entrance because there was no money at home. Uh, but well, I was able to make it. You know, uh, when I started playing football. How did you get there? So everybody has somebody who influences him, who shaped you, who came into your life and did a 360 and everything started going on. Well, well it was difficult. Uh, I can't pinpoint say this or that. But then I quite remember in Kumasi, I used to play this uh, ball power on Chendi. A day I have to play for four teams. So I could say that most of them really contributed to, you know, whatever I've achieved now. I can play from Abuabu to Ashtown to New, whatever. And then uh, after that, I went to play for Kalum Stars. So I think it took Kalum Stars that all this started. I mean, after my four matches with under 20, you know, this, before we used to play under 20 before the under senior, senior team would come and play. So after four matches, then I was invited into under 16, before it was under 16. So I was invited into the under 16, then we were able to go to the first World Cup in Scotland. Well, at the World Cup, a lot of people were blown away by your brilliance. It was for somebody who was just coming back from Kumasi and representing his nation at that age. What were the few things that really made you become a global star, even at that young level? Well, I quite remember I was with so talented, you know, you know, uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, you can talk of Isaac Asare, Mijima. Uh, they were there a lot. But then I think I stood out because this is what I wanted to do. I mean, school was a problem. I did not have a, you know, opportunity to go to school. So my heart was solely in football. And I quite remember our first match when I was chosen to be the man of the match of the game. Uh, after uh, Pele, Pele of Brazil was there, and then he gave me the award, and he said I was going to step in his shoe. The next day when I went to my room, I said, no, thank to God, my, I've achieved my dream. But then I think it was after the tournament also that things really started when Anderlecht, you know, discovered me and they wanted me to come and play for them. Yeah. yeah. So from Anderlecht, do you, I want us to know, at that point you were the hottest cake in the world. Everybody wanted to sign you, top class, Real Madrid, PSG, but Anderlecht was a top class as at that time. And they were known for giving talent the breeding grounds to actually develop and become big stars. Do you regret any footballing decision you made? Oh yeah, but not going to Anderlecht. But after Anderlecht, yes, I regretted it so much. What many were months. the other options and where did you end up? Well, I think after Anderlecht, uh, I should have gone to so many clubs that I think uh, due to not going to school, not knowing what to read, I did not know what I was reading, I did not know what I was signing, you know, put me in so many difficulties. Otherwise, I, took, I should have taken different, if it was now, maybe I would have taken different decisions. So that's why I end up maybe going to so many different clubs. Maybe I, uh, it would have taken me to maybe one or two clubs and, 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 and that would have been it. But well, personally also, I was going through so many pains and that caused me all this as well. Well, you talk about pains and in the last three, four years, pains has been one of the things a lot of people have spoken about you. Now, you know a lot of footballers who are young, upcoming with a lot of promise, yet you read about them and some of them go through what you have gone through. What are some of the advices you can give to young footballers coming up? It's, it's difficult also to, to, to really advise now, especially because 
our time there was, there was no money in football. I mean, some of us are able to keep whatever we we earn at that time, you know, invest in good, you know, at the right channel, so we are still surviving. But now, because of the money, it's difficult to really advise, you know, some of the guys. They may think maybe you are jealous of them or whatever. But I think the most important thing is, you know, as a footballer, make sure you invest very well. Partner, make sure. Choosing, I know we all don't know what will happen in the future, but you make sure you sit down, you think very well before you choose a partner. Because we have people who will come close to you just because of because who you are today, but not the love per se. So sometimes it's really difficult to really advise when it comes to you know certain things, or maybe to advise this young one because of the money, like you mentioned, Paul now. I mean, for an African, I'm very, I mean, I'm very happy, you know, that. An African footballer is the most expensive footballer of the year. But can you tell me that me or somebody can advise Paul now to do? To, it's to, difficult. I mean, it's difficult. Well, but you see, a lot of them will not listen. But there are some that will really go through and say, "Yes, I saw Neil growing up," and I think that Neil, what he's saying, yes, is that's why history is good. So you see what I've gone through and what I've achieved. Maybe you learn. But for him, for you to tell him that, hey, use your money to do this. Or don't go and follow this A, B, C, D. It will be difficult. Which Ghanaian is the most talented for you as we speak? Talent based. Currently? Currently. Wow. Hmm. Difficult one, but still I'll go for Jordan. Jordan are you? You think Jordan are you is the most yeah. talented as we speak? Now you've played with some of the very best players at your time. Would it be too difficult if I ask you to name your all-time best 11, the people that you actually played with, your all-time best 11? It would be difficult though, but I can close my eyes and do it because, yeah, as you mentioned, I've, I've played with so many good players. Okay. Well, one I think I'll go with maybe Salifu, may he rest in peace, Salifu Ansa. And then two, yeah, maybe I'll go with uh, Isaac Asari okay. on the right and then Kusia Pia on the left. Uh, I'll go with Frimpong Manson, you know, at number four. Uh, and then, <laughs> yeah, Sami Kufo, maybe uh, on the back. Uh, I'll play with uh, Stale Ambra. Okay. Yeah, I will, it will be like my number six. Uh, my number seven will be Kofi Abre. And then, I would like to put maybe huh, Ali Ibrahim on the left. Yes. Number 11. Yes. Uh, and then number 8. <laughs> I'll play with Stephen Apia. Uh, Stephen Apia will be there. 8, number 10. And then number 10 will be Abedi Pele, of course. And then Tony Oboa will be there. Number nine. Interesting setup. Before we let you go, finally, and finally, you've been very successful off the field. One of the few people that we look up and say, even though he's done with football, he's one of the people we can look at and say that he's really very impressive with his life, your life. How were you able to be that successful? You have a club that is doing very well. And Glow Lamp Academy is not doing badly at all. Oh, well, Especially I... given that you did not go to school. Well, that's why I decided to set up my school, to be honest with you. There's a secret behind it because what I went through as, as a child, I did not want uh, other children to go through what I went through. That's why I decided to invest my money into education because I think that's the best gift also maybe a parent can give, you know, he or she's child. That's why I decided to do that. But I think it's discipline and humbleness. I'm sure that's the key that have taken me, you know, uh, to this far. Very grateful. And I tell you one thing, I know Neil Dati Lamte personally, he's one of the most humble people I have come across. I'm grateful that you made time. We'll come your way again with another City Sports special. Very grateful to everybody who made time to watch and especially my man, me, for passing through.